Hello friends, this video on reproduction in organisms part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So this was all about asexual reproduction. Now we will talk about sexual reproduction. Now again from the very basics, what is sexual reproduction? As I said, it is that mode of reproduction in which new individuals are formed from two parents. So having two parents is a must. So as soon as you talk about two parents, you talk about two different sexes, that is male and female. So here sex is involved, that is fusion between the male and the female gametes is involved. You need male sex cells, you need female sex cells, that is the specialized cells which can actually fuse with the counterpart cell and give rise to a new organism. So this is there in sex sexual reproduction. So here the new individuals are not identical to the parents however they have similarities like this guy has black hair which he has got from his father similarly this guy has brown hair which he got from his mother but it is not that the individuals or the children will be exactly identical to the parents. Very rarely you see that some of the other differences will be there. So here variations occur these differences are variations so it is a relatively slower mode of reproduction when compared to the asexual mode because in asexual mode a lot of organisms get produced by processes like binary fission, I mean, a lot of like uh, multiple fission or fragmentation so you actually end up getting a lot of them but in case of sexual reproduction it is not like that. It, it is comparatively a very slow process. For example, if you take the example of human beings, it is actually a very slow process, especially for human beings. You see, a child takes almost uh, nine months to take birth. So that is for one child. And again, getting subsequent children is not, uh, it, it, it cannot be a very fast process, right? Now the question is when we already have a sexual mode of reproduction, why do we need sexual reproduction? So what are the advantages that we have in sexual reproduction which was missing in asexual? Now as I have mentioned before also that in asexual reproduction, the daughters are exactly identical to the parent. Therefore there was no variation. But variations are extremely useful for the survival of species. Why? Because variations are nothing but changes. Changes to adapt with the changing environment. So these changes are for better. So it actually helps the organisms to cope up with the unfavorable conditions. So that means variations are something which is desirable. So sexual reproduction incorporates variation in species which in turn helps show survival of a species. Each individual in a species has its own uniqueness and identity. In case of asexual reproduction it was just uh, uh, the same organisms getting produced, morphologically identical, genetically identical. So there was no uniqueness at all. So if you talk about a hydra, all the hydra that will get produced by budding, they will be exactly similar. So there is no uniqueness, there is no identity. But in case of sexual reproduction, each organism will have its own uniqueness, its own identity. The, like if suppose if there is a couple who has three kids, each of their kids will have their own identity. By looking at them, you can identify, okay, he, his name is X, his name is Y, his name is Z. So that means every organism will have their own uniqueness and identity enables organisms to survive under unfavorable conditions as I mentioned before also like in case of sexual reproduction DNA copying mechanism is the key concept behind it as I mentioned before so during DNA copying it is not accurate so but not that bad as well so the process of DNA copying it is not the exact copy because if it is exact copy then the kid will be exactly similar to the parent but that is not the case so there are some differences somewhere so those little bit of differences give rise to variations now if the dna copying is very much inaccurate in that case the new cell would die as dna won't be able to cope with the cellular apparatus correct so here all the uh, situations are taken care at the very initial stage when the process of DNA copying starts. So from there only the organisms tend to uh, face or tend to prepare itself to face the unfavorable conditions. And that is why you actually see variations. 
Now the question is which organisms undergo sexual mode of reproduction because for asexual mode we saw a hell lot of uh, bacteria, fungi, even plants which undergo asexual reproduction. So which kind of organisms undergo sexual mode of reproduction? Now as I said asexual mode is seen in organisms with relatively simpler body organization but sexual mode is seen in most higher organisms with complex body structure like higher plants and animals. So in plants we see both the sexual as well as asexual mode like plants have are open to both types of both ways of reproduction. So you actually see both of them. Whereas in case of animals they mostly prefer the sexual mode. In fact sexual mode of reproduction is the only mode of reproduction for animals. So when I say animals I mean all the animals. In some of the fungi also we see sexual mode of reproduction. So now the next question is when, when can an organism sexually reproduce? Now can any organism for example if you talk about any animal, the moment that animal is born is it capable of reproducing sexually or not? So that is the question that when what is the right time when an organism is capable to reproduce sexually? Now, depending on when the cap organism is capable of reproducing sexually, there are three phases in the life of every organism. And what are those three phases? Juvenile phase, which is the first phase, that is the period of growth. So this is the phase when the organism after being born, it grows. Now when I say organism, I know not only mean animal, it can be plants also because sexual reproduction is present in plants also. So this is the phase where the organism cannot reproduce sexually. It is it, The organism is just growing, whether it is plant or animal. It is just growing. So it is the growth phase. It is also known as the vegetative phase in plants, just a different name. Next is the reproductive phase. So as the name suggests, this is the phase where the, cap, uh, where the organism is capable of reproduction. So it comes after the ju juvenile phase. Now once the juvenile phase is over, that means once the organism has grown and the organism has become matured enough, then it enters into the reproductive phase. So here in this phase, it is capable of reproducing sexually. And the reproductive phase again is followed by another phase which is called the senescent phase. What happens in this phase? Aging starts. So it is the end of reproductive phase. So once it enters into this phase, aging occurs that is it uh, tends to become older and it is the last phase of the lifespan. So the entire life cycle of any organism, any plant or animal, first is birth. So that organism will be formed. Then next is growth, so it will grow to become mature and then is death, so the organisms will die. So again it will die and then again it will take birth, I mean it, it will die but it gives birth to some other organisms. So these are the three stages in the life cycle of any organism, birth, growth and death. So based on this, these are the three phases, from birth to growth is the juvenile phase, after growth is the reproductive phase, after reproductive phase is the senescent phase and senescent phase finally leads to death. So these are the three different phases of, the, of any organism. Now when we talk about the juvenile phase, the ju duration of the juvenile phase is different for different organisms. For some organisms it is very short, that is they become mature very quickly. For some organisms it is quite long. Uh, in plants, this phase has different structures like different shapes of leaves, different colors of feathers of birds, different protections of the body that means. If you talk about animals specifically for human beings, you would have seen that this phase continues for um, up to an age of say 13 to 15 years, like till you are considered a kid. So that is your juvenile phase when you are growing, your height increases, your weight increases. So all growth activities take place till you are 13 to 15 years old. In the reproductive phase what happens is the reproductive organs develop and that is how it is defined that okay you are matured. So based on when now again this reproductive phase again will be further divided into I mean or based on the reproductive phase of different animals they will be further divided into several categories. So what let's do one thing let us discuss each of these phase in little more detail. Thank you.
please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.